One December morning, Nancy came to the sheds. She polished Renius's brass as the little engine was readied for work. You must be excited, she remarked. Your first Christmas home since being mended. It's a call for celebration. No time for that, smiled Renius. Far too much to do. Surely, replied Nancy, you must be having some sort of party. Surely not, chuckled Renius. Railways don't stop for Christmas parties, my dear. We've managed just fine without them. You've never had one, cried Nancy. Scarloe yawned, woken by the discourse. You must understand, Nancy. We weren't in a position to have parties in the old days. Our crews went home to their families, thankful for another year of work. Renius and I were just glad to have rails beneath our wheels. Well, those days aren't these days, retorted Nancy, and you shouldn't carry on like they are. Stop being a pair of old ladies and have some fun. Why, my choir group could come sing for you later. My timetable doesn't have fun scheduled today, but it does have a train in 20 minutes. Thank you for the polish, Nancy, whistled Renius as he steamed away. Honestly, Scarloe, how do we get him to lighten up? You've had plenty of Christmas parties before. Not that he's been here for, chuckled the old engine. Give him time. He'll come around. He didn't. Any party talk was lost in the sound of whistles and leashes. The other engines grew nervous. There's been a party every year since we arrived, said Peter Sam. Imagine saving the railway only to squander Christmas, huffed Duncan. The big railway has them, added Rusty. Why can't we? Precisely, said Sir Handel, and I'll not be upstaged by them. Gordon will go on about it for ages. Renius was none the wiser. He carried on, determined to run the line as he always had. That afternoon, he'd slipped fiercely on a section of rail. He got his grip just as he passed Rusty and the workmen. What do you think, Renius? Rusty was gazing at a small pine tree, damaged by winter winds. The workmen had stood it up like a Christmas tree. I think the rails back there need sanding. You'd best be off before the next train comes. Oh, Rusty sighed. I thought it was just our size. At the top station, Nancy and the choir were practicing carols. Peter Sam decided to join in with his whistle. As he gave a punctual toot, there came a great screech. Everyone winced as Renius broke to a halt nearby. What's happening? he cried. Oh, we just finished I saw three ships, said Peter Sam. Oh, Holy Night is next, if you fancy whistling along. No, I don't. I thought you were in trouble. Come on, Revenezer, giggled Nancy. How can we sing at your Christmas party without practicing first? There won't be a Christmas party, he snapped. I've already told you I don't want one. I'm far too busy, and so are you, Peter Sam. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. He stormed off up the line, leaving a flustered Nancy behind. The quarry's the perfect place for a crabby old engine like you, she shouted. Dusk fell as Renius shunted the last of his trucks together. He glanced around. Save for a few workmen, he was all alone. Just like the workshops. He remembered the holidays that passed during his repairs. The shops were deserted, save for a few engines who were indifferent to him. He thought of how lonely he felt, how he wished Scarloe were there with him. Nancy's words echoed in his smoke box. Oh dear, he sighed. I have been a cross patch. On his way home, he stopped at the top station to fetch his coaches. 
As he shunted them, he noticed the station master decorating the tree in the waiting room. It did look nice. To his surprise, the choir was still there, singing happily. Nancy popped her head out the door. Were we singing too loud for you, Rebenezer? she asked incredulously. I am sorry, Nancy, he sighed. I'd grown so used to not celebrating Christmas. I didn't stop to think if anyone else wanted to. Your choir does sound wonderful. We've missed our show. The car meant to pick us up got stuck in the snow. But I'm glad it's made you change your tune, she smiled. Suddenly, Renius had an idea. You still could put on a show, Nancy. At the sheds, the thin controller was hanging decorations. He glanced at the solemn faces around him. What's gotten into you, engines? You'd hardly know Christmas was coming with how positively dismal you look. Excuse me, sir, sighed Scarloey, but it's... It's Renius, bellowed Sir Handel. I was getting to that, glared Scarloey. No, said Sir Handel. Look! The echoes of Nancy's choir spilled out of the coaches as Renius arrived with a great whistle. Sorry we're late, he smiled. Had to make a few, uh, special stops. <gasps> our tree! gasped Rusty. It really was just our size, laughed Renius. I'm sorry, Rusty. And everyone. I suppose I was caught up in old habits. I'm grateful to have a railway to call home, and to be with my friends again. Does this mean, ventured Peter Sam, we are having a party? On one condition, stressed Renius. What's that? Nancy must stop calling me Rebenezer. The little engines all chortled with delight, and the festivities began. Renius smiled. It was nice to celebrate. Best of all, it was good to be home with friends new and old.